Hey everyone, today I'd like to talk about sleeping pads, and uh, when I refer to sleeping pads, I'm not necessarily referring to your classic massive uh, Coleman inflatable mattress with an electric pump that you would take on a car camping trip or you may have experienced in your life. I'm talking more about backpacking and wilderness camping, canoe camping, sleeping pads, and they pretty much come in two varieties. Uh, they come in I would one one would be a, an inflatable variety, but one that you inflate just by blowing into it, um, and something like this, uh, and compare that to a closed cell foam variety, which would be something like this. These differ from each other with respect to durability, with respect to comfort, with respect to warmth, uh, with respect to cost, and I just want to focus on kind of those features and just highlight the pros and cons that either type of sort of lightweight sleeping pad varieties that you can get. So we'll just go through some of the pros and cons and look at some of the different options. So on the left here we have the Thermarest Ridge Rest, on the right we have the Thermarest Z Rest. Uh, they're both closed cell foam pads. Um, the, real, the main difference between the two is that the one on the right, the Z-Rest, kind of folds into an accordion style. Um, and the one on the left, just you have to simply have to roll up. And I usually secure both of them with buckle straps, and I'll show you how they look secured again, once again. But, yeah, I mean, these are both uh, really, uh, they're inexpensive. The the Ridge Rest is like 20 bucks. The Z-Rest on the right, the accordion style fold-up one, is like double the price. It's like 40 bucks, 45 bucks. They both weigh about one pound. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, the benefits of closed cell foam is, yeah, once again, they're cheaper, they're more durable, they cannot be punctured, there's nothing to puncture, there's no air that they're holding. Um, they're kind of versatile, I mean, you can use them as a sleeping pad, but you can also kind of adjust them, fold them up, you know, lean them against a tree, use them as a chair, um, fold them up and use them as a seat. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different versatility that they offer. Um, also, with respect to uh, if, you, if you have dogs, I mean, you don't have to worry about them puncturing them or um, anything like that. Uh, and but the, I guess one of the, the main downside is is that they're just bulkier, and yeah, they're just simply less comfortable than the inflatable style lightweight backpacking sleeping pads. So yeah, I mean, just just to reiterate, you know, cheaper, more durable, more versatile, more dog friendly. Um, they also tend to be bulkier and uh, less comfortable and of course they have you know because you're closer to the ground they're thinner right so you're closer to the ground so you know the r value um, of these sleeping pads and sleeping pads are rated on their r value and r value just quite simply is just the um kind of the the degree to which uh thermal conductance occurs between some kind of a barrier so it's often used for insulation for uh, buildings and structures um, but you can also apply that to sleeping pads, and um, these have about ha at the very about half, if not less, half the R value of uh, the inflatable uh, counterpart. So um, the higher the R value, the more uh, warmer they are. Really, just to put it in very simple terms, the higher the R value, the more warmer they are. And in uh, closed cell foam has less smaller R value than the inflatable counterparts that we'll talk about. So here's a classic uh, example of a inflatable, lightweight, backpacking, canoe camping, sleeping pad. This is the Thermarest Guide Light, which quite frankly they don't make anymore, but they kind of have converted it into a new model they call the Base Camp. It's very similar, and these are a little heavier than the closed cell foam ones, maybe a double the weight, about two pounds-ish. Uh, they're also a lot more expensive. I mean, you're going to spend at the very least $100 on something like this. So significantly more um, expensive than the closed cell foam counterparts. And I would say, you know, just to reiterate, you know, these are warmer. Uh, just simply have a hot, higher R value, probably double that of the closed cell foam. You know, they're way more comfortable, uh, especially if you are a side sleeper. Um, and... Uh, they, in general, are more compactable. Now you saw, I'll reiterate how these all look when they're kind of back in their compacted form, but you saw a little bit, this one's quite bulky, um, and like I said, it's heavier. It's two pounds as 
opposed to the, the closed cell foam um, counterpart. But this one, you know, Thermarest, the brand, they also offer a lot. They make a lot of different models. Let's just, they make a ton of different models. And they do offer one that I do not have. That's called the Neo Air um, X Lite. And they have all these different iterations of that Neo Air, which actually are lighter than the closed cell foam. Um, but they're like $200. So, you know, it's the, the more fancy you get with your inflatable sleeping pads, the more expensive they get. But the lighter they get, and the um, more comfortable they probably really are. I mean, you're off the ground higher, and you're on a foam, you're on a inflatable pad as opposed to just a simple foam pad. So you look farther off the ground, higher R value, more comfort. Here's just an example of like an off-brand inflatable. This is the Static V2 um, by Climate, um, which I've had, and this one's really lightweight and super compactable as opposed to this, and they're both inflatable. These are both inflatable sleeping pads. This kind of old vintage guide light Thermarest is not nearly as compactable as this. Um, but you can imagine the lighter uh, and thinner the sleeping pads get, the more prone they are to puncture, right? So um, it's, if you're gonna be rolling with a inflatable sleeping pad, it's not a bad idea to have a repair kit puncture repair kit i mean at the very least some duct tape would would probably hold you over but they make kind of more formal sleeping pad repair kits so you definitely want to keep one of those in your toolkit yeah so take to take a little closer look at the valve on these inflating sleeping pads it's usually in the corner of the pad and you simply just you know turn it left and release the valve and then you blow right into that um, they do make self-inflating varieties quote unquote self-inflating that sort of do that on their own, but um, you still have to kind of add a little bit at the end to make it super fully inflated. So on the topic of inflatable uh, lightweight sleeping pads, they also make double wide ones. Now this is not a Thermarest, this is by a brand called Xped, E-X-P-E-D, and we received this as a gift, and it's like a double wide inflatable lightweight sleeping pad. I uh, used it uh, on canoe trips uh, in the past, primarily and I've shared this with my partner and I've shared this with my brother and as long as you're cool with sleeping kind of sort of close to someone you're comfortable with that um, it's pretty sweet you know uh, very comfortable uh, and the cool thing about it is that each half of the pad has its own uh, inflation portal if you will so I guess if one half fails the other half is still sealed and also you can kind of I guess, curate your comfort on each half. So in summary, both the inflatable lightweight sleeping pads and the closed cell foam sleeping pads have their pros and cons. Um, and I'll go through just in summary a few of them. So with respect to comfort, uh, closed cell, or excuse me, closed cell foam is inferior to that of the inflatable. The inflatable ones are more comfortable, especially if you're a side sleeper. When it comes to durability, I feel like the closed cell foam is the winner in that because uh, it cannot be punctured, it cannot lose air. Um, it's also more versatile because you can kind of fold it up and um, you know convolute it into different uh, positions to use it as you know a seat or a chair. Uh, Cost-wise, almost unilaterally, the inf the inflatable sleeping pad is more expensive and sometimes uh, like an order of magnitude, you know, we're talking for a super ultra lightweight inflatable one, it could be a couple hundred bucks, whereas the, the cheapest foam pad, like the Ridge Rest, not pictured here, but shown earlier is like 20 bucks. So cost, it's no comparison. The foam, closed cell foam is cheaper. Um, of course, with warmth, uh, the inflatable ones always have a higher R value. The uh, foam pads, have a lower R value, they're less warm. Um, as far as like compactability and like size and weight, it just depends. Um, this is kind of a vintage Thermarest inflatable one, this red one. It's heavier than that foam one by about a pound, about double. Uh, but they make like, for example, the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite is, is even lighter than the closed cell foam one pictured here. So it really just depends how much you want to spend, but I think that the lighter you get, the thinner you get, and the more prone to puncture, so you'll want to make sure to carry some kind of a repair kit. Um, and then really, uh, 
yeah, I mean, another just aspect is, you know, if you have dogs, you know, of course, with uh, claws and such, they could puncture a inflatable one. Can't puncture the closed cell foam one. So really for me, oh, I pivoted off on this for many years and I've gone back and forth and I could see myself going back the other way. But right now, as it stands, I'm a closed cell foam guy. Um, yeah. They're bulkier, but they're so light, and you can just clip them to the out the exterior of your pack or bag or whatever, and that's very possible. But I don't know. I just like the. I don't like to wake up and have lost air every night. I feel like that just happens inevitably, no matter how fancy of an inflatable sleeping pad you get. So that's just my personal opinion. And uh, yeah, to each their own. I mean, I I still use that double wide one quite a bit. That's pretty fun. Um, but. Yeah, I, it's just really a matter of personal preference. And quite honestly, if you're winter camping, it's nice to use both. You have the base, the foam one at the base, and the inflatable one on top. It's pretty nice. So I'm team closed cell foam right now.